Hello and welcome back to The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel. Last episode we explored Grelia Fortress and then we headed out to experience the the military uh, live fire uh, training exercise. And um, where we just met uh, Lieutenant General Craig, um, also known as Elliot's dad, Craig the Red. And uh, he's about to start the, uh, the exercise. So we'll now begin today's joint military exercise. Armored Division 4 and 5, commence combat operations. Forward to the Empire and the Imperial Army. Begin. Yes, sir. 5th Armored Division, Armored Regiment will advance first. Armored Car Regiment and Infantry Regiment, follow their lead. 4th Armored Division, Armored Regiment and Infantry Regiment, advance together. Armored Car Regiment, deploy to the left and right. Thus, the military exercise came to an end. The 4th Armored Division, led by Lieutenant General Craig, withdrew to an encampment near the fortress. Meanwhile, we returned to the fortress, where Major Nightheart outlined the results of the training exercise. After that... Sorry you had to wait for us to finish. Um, something I want to point out um, that might be important. So those uh, bots that they were destroying are autonomous. They probably have more. And they're all programmed to attack the Imperial Army like units. But they have like paint, um, paint bullets, rubber, like in rubber bullets and shit to uh, fill the guns and the, their robots. Um, so what happens if, I don't know, some terrorist organization replaces the paint with real ammo? And that's just kind of me thinking, looking back at the introduction, which I think takes place here. Alright, sorry you had to wait for us to finish. Don't worry about it. We're the guests here, after all. Thanks for your consideration. At the very least, I'd say dinner is a million times better than lunch was. I mean, it's part hash to beef day. That's an Imperial Army tradition, isn't it? Ooh, just the smells make me hungry. Oh yeah, where'd your instructor go? She's a real looker. I was hoping to get a chance to talk to her. She went to see the fortress commander with Ni instructor Nightheart. She uh, did ask us to eat without her tonight. Ah, oh, right. Well, if she's with Major Nightheart. It's hard to compete with those guys from the 4th Armored Division. 
wouldn't be enough if they just had Craig at the red, but they got the major too. And he's kind of scary. <laughs> like a division of muscle men. He was like, ah. Oh. Anyway, we shouldn't keep you tied up any longer. Your hash beef's gonna go cold. See you tomorrow, guys. Wow, it's actually delicious. It's like nine day compared to what we had for lunch. You're telling me. Hm. Oh, come on, guys. What's with all the gloomy faces? I think you guys might have had a bit too rosy of an outlook. What were you expecting to see out there? I'm sure you can understand at least a little of how we feel. It's like, has everything we've learned in our time at the Academy been for nothing? Academics, the arts, individual skill in combat. None of those matter in the slightest in real warfare, do they? It's true. If all you're looking to do is fight a war, you don't need any of those. All you need is plenty of troops at your command, the latest weaponry, and overwhelming firepower. Assuming you know the tactics to use them well and a strategy that employs them effectively, I suppose. Dachshunds are even more powerful than I was expecting them to be, too. I remember my, remember my mother boasting about their capabilities when she was trying to sell them to the army two years ago, but... To be honest, I'm feeling somewhat disheartened as well. I can't, I can't see there being a place for swords on the battlefield with weapons like those on the front lines. Well, I don't think that means individual combat skill doesn't matter at all. Still, I think maybe we've been misunderstanding something important all this time. What we saw in that military exercise today was power in its purest form. It has no morality of its own. It exists to bring about a result, regardless of the ideals or principles of those who wield it. That's true. In a sense, the same could be said of a sword or a gun. And all the way up, on up to something as huge as Grelly as railway guns, too. I think I finally understand why they wanted us to watch that military exercise in the first place. They could have taught us in a less roundabout fashion. Well, it looks like you didn't wait for me to start the party. It's Sarah. Instructor Sarah? So you spoke with the commander? Sure did. I've got up-to-date info on the trade conference, too. As well as all the latest on the terrorists. So there's new information about the Imperial Liberation Front? Anyway, before I get to that, let me explain what you'll be doing tomorrow. In the morning, you'll schedule to participate in the Imperial Army's physical fitness training. In the afternoon, you'll be attending a special lecture, where I'll bring you up to speed on that info I just mentioned. After that, you've been granted special permission to view the railway guns. I see. Looking forward to that. Sounds like we got a pretty packed schedule. Well, we did bring you all the way out here, so we might as well make the most of it. Every nation possesses power in the form of a military. Whether that military is large or small, Relia Fortress just happens to have the power in a very striking, easy to understand form. As students of military academy, you have an obligation to know the scale of the power. The Empire of Erebonia wields at present a power you might one day be in charge of yourselves. What? <laughs> anyway, even a meeting that long couldn't keep me away from trying the famous hash of beef of rice. I've heard it's the only decent food they have around here, so I've been looking forward to this all day. I should probably finish eating. Yeah, though it's got it's gotten a bit cold now. Maybe I'll go ask for seconds. Oh, oh, you sis, you don't want the rest of yours, can I have it? I'd sooner throw it away than give it to you. What an ick. So, I know that you can romance people in this game, and this is completely off topic, but a part of me kind of wishes that um, there was a canon relationship like, be, um, and like, like a relationship that's forced throughout the games of um, Reen and Elisa, because like we're kind of seeing here with all the characters, kind of like who they mesh well together with, and um, like as though they're like in their own form of relationship, and they have like Elliot and Gaius, um, which I I wouldn't expect this since um, I don't think um, gay or lesbian couples in in Japan at this time would. 
be really accepted, but anyway. It would be kind of interesting to see, like, Elia and Gaius together, Fee and Lara, um, and then, like, when they're older, I, like, I will repeat that, when they're older, and, like, um, uh, Eusis and Milam, like, Milium. Like, they all, like, really mesh together very well. So, anyway. Okay, that should do it. All right, that covers today, today's quota. Whew, I'm looking forward to a nice long bath. Well, you know how every time there's a military exercise coming up, the workload gets pretty crazy like this? Still, at least managing inventory has gotten a lot easier thanks to the Orbal Net. They've got everything hooked up on the network over in Crossbell, right? Wish the Empire would get on that a bit more. Think of the utility. Well, from the sound of it, you need a special equipment. You need special equipment to send signals through a wired connection to make use of it. And considering the size of the Empire, it's probably going to be quite a while before it's widespread thing here. Huh? Normal mail? Looks like it's from HQ. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This right here is the problem with the Orbital Net. There's no such thing as off hours when they just send you orders around the clock. Huh? What's going on? So get this, they're planning on doing some extra exercise tomorrow. That means we gotta outfit 20 oxens with senior units by tomorrow. 20! Seriously? Might as well start up another pot of coffee. We're in for an all-nighter for sure. Do we have that many C units left? Actually, another lot came by freight just this evening. Exactly 20, if you can believe it. Guess we'll just have to get it done. Crap, at least let us take a shower. Gotta head down to the mess hall and grab some snacks. You want anything? What are C units? Is that the combat units? Like, the automated combat units? I don't know. But them sending it pretty late seems kind of fishy. 831, Tuesday. Fortress, Crossbell State Side. That is terrifying. So the Orbital Guns would just come out the sides? At last, after what seemed like enough adventure to fill a week, we reached the final day of our field study. Over in Crossbell State, they were busy preparing for today's keynote session at the trade conference. We spent the morning running through the Imperial Army's physical fitness program alongside some of the soldiers. And after completing it, no easy task, I might add, we sat down to a lukewarm redux of yesterday's lunch. That afternoon, during a special military science lecture, we were presented with a confidential report on the terrorists. The Imperial Liberation Front is in Crossbell? That's right. Or at least, that's what the Intelligence Division believes. Looks like a known terrorist organization from the Calvert Republic has turned up in Crossbell, too. The situation over there is pretty tough and go right now. Touch and go. Oh no. What are the authorities doing? Everything they can, naturally. However, operations are being handled solely by the Intelligence Division. They refuse to tell the Imperial Army anything, just that they have a trusted ally taking care of things. But who does the Intelligence Division trust? You gotta know something about this, right, Short Stack? Well, I do, but I can't really tell you anything. I guess it's not a breach of confidentiality to tell you they're a really strong bunch, though. That's still pretty vague. I've got a few ideas. Anyway, there's not much point in us worrying about that right now. The bigger issue is that our terrorists of the, of the hour, the Imperial Liberation Front, are a bigger crew than we thought. Big enough to be in possession of a state-of-the-art military airship, at least. Seriously? Airship? Can we assume Reinford's the manufacturer then? Correct. Just how something that large found its way into the hands of insurgents is currently unknown. But it seems to be a high-speed model, different from the heavily armored types favored by the Imperial Army. I bet it's from the RF-26 series. There are a number of different models within that series, though. The 
they have an airship, that means they're going to be a whole lot, whole lot more difficult to catch, doesn't it? That's exactly what it means. Sarah knew this. She's known this for a while. She's seen that airship. When we were in um, uh, Norn, and we, like, they, they, fl they flew there. Like, she knew about this. So they've had to have known about this for a long while. That's exactly what it means. It's basically impossible to keep tabs on them as it is. With an airship in their possession, there's no telling when or where they'll pop up next. It's quite worrying, especially since Prince Oliver is attending the conference. And Tao is in Crossbell right now, too. Yeah. You got, now you got me worrying. Uh, take it easy. I don't think you have anything to worry about with Gramps and Lecter over there. Well, that aside. The terrorist attention is currently focused on Crossbell. Does that mean the Empire is effectively safe right now? You raise a good point, Laura. They did target Princess, Princess Alfin during the Summer Festival last month. Um, the Chancellor and the Prince is there in Crossbell. It's possible it's just a feint. Maybe they just want us to believe they're targeting the Chancellor. Why wouldn't they target him? The Railway Military Police thought so, too, which is why they've increased the security level here at home. The Emperor and everyone else connected to the Imperial family should be safe. They've also beefed up security anywhere that seems shorthanded. Uh, as well prepared as ever, I see. At any rate, you finally uncovered some information on the terrorist identities, correct? That's right. And once again, we have the intelligence division to thank for that. If you turn your attention to the screen, please. Can you take a drink? Okay, there's the G. Gideon, I think is his full name? That's the man who kidnapped Princess Alfred and Elise and Heimdall. Not to mention he tried to start a war with Calvert in the Nord Highlands. So who is he? His full name is Michael Gideon. He used to be an assistant professor at the Imperial Academy in Heimdall. That man? Teacher? So an academic. Right. His focus was political, political philosophy. Three years ago he was dismissed from his position due to his intense criticism of Chancellor Osborne and hardline policies. Oh. So getting laid off set him on the road to terrorism? Well, it sounds like the actual reason he was let go was because he was handing out tracts and flyers in public. You'll find these kinds of idealists as the heart of the most of most terrorist groups, though. Conceding a group with their core ideology, they twist it to be even more militant and radical. Can't even reason with them either. Yeah, they just don't know when to give up. Sounds like some other groups I know. So we do we know anything about the others? We cross paths with the what I can only assume were three other key members last month in Heimdall. Yes, S, V, C. Seems like they haven't been able to dig up much on those three yet. The strongest lead right now is that B may have belonged to a Jaeger port. Interesting. He was toting around this machine gun that looked like it should have been mounted on a vehicle. Did he seem at all familiar to you? Not really. They're working on narrowing down the identity of S2, but too early to make an informed statement. Real unknown is their leader, C. Ah, oh, the one in the visored helmet. I heard he was able to go toe to toe with Green Lore and Fee simultaneously. I almost find that hard to believe. I don't. I imagine there are plenty of people in the Empire who could do so. It goes without saying that the Radiant Void Master could fend three of us off without much of a problem. But I'd bet Good Mira, Structure Sarah, and Major Nyhart could do it too. I can't say for certain. Okay, Mr. Masi over here. The major here is widely held to be one of the strongest up-and-coming officers in the entire army. I've heard people mention him right alongside Major Vander. Playing it out a little thick today, aren't we? Going by the family name, it seems it's safe to assume he's a practitioner of the Vander style of swordsmanship. No doubt Lieutenant, a relative of Lieutenant General Vander from Zedar Gate. While I wouldn't question whether I can stand on equal footing with him, Major Vander is unquestionably strong. He was my classmate during my military academy years, and quite close to Prince Oliver as well. In fact, he's in Crossbow right now, serving as the Prince's bodyguard. Whoa. Well, that's reassuring to know. But getting back to the point, it's not but just C. We still have know very little about their group as a whole. Even their source of funding is a mystery. So even if they're a no-show in Crossbow, I doubt we've heard the last of them. 
call it coincidence or fate, but you put the kibush on their schemes twice now. It's entirely possible they come to hold a personal grudge against you, so be careful. Right. Yeah, we'll be sure to keep that in mind. Melon was just like dot dot dot. That's probably why she was put in the class. Eventually, the afternoon series of special lectures came to an end, and it was finally time to get a peek at Corellia Fortress's infamous railway guns. 3.30. PM, obviously, because it's 15.30. You'll now be shown to the area where the railway guns are housed. All of what you're about to see is highly classified. I presume you're aware of the protocols surrounding confidential intel. Yes, Instructor. Uh, I'm getting kind of nervous. Me too. Guys, it's just the railway guns. I've seen them before. And nothing to get all excited over. Orion? This part of the field study isn't mandatory for you. If you'd like to stay here and wait for us, that'd be more than okay. Jeez, I'm kidding. I don't want to be the only one left behind. Uh, excuse me a moment. This is Nightheart speaking. Yes, no one made a woman. Wait, do you want to speak to me? Of course, put him through. What could you possibly be calling about at a time like this? What? What's happening? Is he taking a call from someone outside the fortress on his carcass? Sure looks that way. Understood. We'll be on alert here as well. Yes. Right. Take care out there. Something happened in Crossbell? I'm afraid so. A short while ago, the skyscraper where the conference is taking place came under attack by the Imperial Liberation Front. The attack was carried out via airship. Fortunately, they were able to repel the terrorists, and Prince Oliver, Chancellor Osborne, and the others are unharmed. However, it's too early to tell if that danger has truly passed. We did attack the conference. How foolish. But it's not all, is it? Something else strange happened. What was it? The terrorists were somehow able to gain access to the Orville Net and manipulate the shutters that partitioned the building. Furthermore, they had with them a force of mechanical monsters. I don't like the sound of that. You found something like that in Graham, right? Yeah, Graham and one of them on the highway here, there. And they broke into the Orville Net? Major, how much of Broly Fortress is ne network? At present, it's only used for inventory and equipment management by the maintenance staff. What was that? A tremor? It came from right below us. Below? The hangar. What the hell? Oxens. What happened here? They just started moving. No one's inside. They just started moving on their own. Did the sea unit start malfunctioning? No, they couldn't have. What's a sea unit? It's an automatic control unit we put on vehicles that are going to serve as targets in military exercises. How do sea units end up attached to our most advanced tanks? is really bad. Uh, I'm going to assess the situation. But we're going to end the episode here. Next episode, we're going to figure get to the bottom of what's happening here and take out those things, hopefully. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.